So next I want to talk about synthetics, uh, which is a really cool idea. Uh, it again uh, is a derivative, uh, but it's going to be different than what we talked about with uh, dy dx. So um, this is something that I believe is purely a result of the DeFi innovation. So this is the type of asset that is, is hard to think about in traditional uh, finance. So effectively, what we're going to do is we're going to create a derivative and the value is going to be based upon an underlying asset that is not owned or escrowed. How is that possible? Okay, so this is what synthetics is doing. And again, um, this is a very interesting uh, idea. And of course, I've got uh, examples of this. So the idea here is that the company is going to issue synths, which I'll talk about um, a lot. These are tokens, and these tokens are pegged to an underlying price um, uh, feed. Okay, and they're backed by a collateral. So if you really think about this, that kind of should remind you of MakerDAO's DAI. So again, the, the DAI uh, is pegged to the dollar, or very close to a dollar. And, and to get that, you've got this over-collateralization uh, of DAI. Okay, so we're going to have something uh, similar, um, but different. So uh, the price feeds are going to come from an oracle, and in particular, uh, we'll use Chainlink's decentralized uh, oracle. And theoretically, these synths uh, could track uh, any asset. Okay, so uh, again, in the stablecoin space, you've got coins that could track, let's say, US dollar, but it doesn't have to be the US dollar. You can set up that mechanism with, um, let's say, MakerDAO uh, to create something that is pegged to something else. Okay, so what are we going to track here? And it turns out that synthetics has got a wide range. And I'm just showing you a few of the, uh, the assets that they're tracking. So it could be uh, the cryptos like BTC, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, XRP is, is Ripple. And notice the S um, before, that's the synthetic uh, versions of Bitcoin. So it could be traditional uh, currencies, fiat currencies. So SUSD, that's going to be something very similar to USDC or uh, DAI. But we've got other countries, euros, the yen, Australian dollar, Swiss franc. And again, I'm just showing you uh, some of these. And it could be that you track to a stock index. For example, the FTSE, the Nikkei, uh, or a stock. There's Tesla, Google, Apple, Facebook. So again, uh, these are, are tokenized ways to basically um, participate in the price appreciation or depreciation of, of certain uh, assets. So um, why stop there? We've got commodities too. So XIU is gold, XAG is silver. We've got oil, which I mentioned a little earlier. Um, and notice the last one is also oil, but it's I oil. So what does that mean? Well, I stands for inverse. So the S tokens are participating on the upside and the I is you buy something where you think it's actually going to go down. Okay, so it's uh, so basically you've got these tokens. Um, 
and, and uh, a long position in uh, a synth is called an S token. And I showed you lots of them. And a short position is called an I token. So I showed you I oil, but it could be I ETH. All of these are synthetic because they depend upon a price feed. And you're probably thinking right now, okay, why even stop at the assets we've already talked about? There's so many other things that you could tokenize based upon uh, a price feed that you uh, decide upon. And you need to have a reliable oracle, uh, of course, uh, for this to work. They use the, the chain link um, oracle. Okay, so there's also a platform token. And the platform token, let's not confuse um, the SNX token for a governance token. Uh, it's more of a utility token. So it's used within the network. So remember, there's three different types of tokens. Right, so we've got our utility token, and this is the SNX. Um, we've also got our equity tokens, which represent shares of a, a liquidity pool, and a governance token like Maker or Comp. So SNX is a utility token, and it is, of course, traded. Uh, you can see the market capitalization of SNX is almost at the time of, of doing this video, a um, billion dollars, and it's actively uh, traded. So how does this work? Um, so when a user um, mints a synth um, against the, the platform token, SNX, they incur a debt that's proportional to the total outstanding debt and everything denominated in US dollars. And they become responsible for a percentage of the debt in the sense that um, it unlocks their SNX collateral if they need to return it to, to US dollars. Um, and this is interesting. The debt is global. So it's across all of the cents. So it's shared collectively um, by all of the holders and it's based upon their percentage of the debt that, um, that they own when they open their position. Okay, I'm gonna go through some mechanics as to what is actually going on in the background, but again, this is like really a different uh, idea and, and fascinating. So um, it turns out that the outstanding US dollar uh, denominated debt is gonna change uh, any time the, the price level uh, of the synths uh, actually change. And what's crucial is that each holder remains responsible for the same percentage of the global debt that they were responsible for when they minted their synths. Okay, so, so basically, uh, if the things that you buy outperform the other synths that are available, then you're gonna be a winner in this particular type of platform. And again, I wanna go through some examples. Um, this is, again, a different uh, type of uh, mechanism. So with a, like a, a synth uh, position, the trader is, is long. Um, and, and you're long against the entire pool's portfolio. So you will make a profit uh, relative to the pool. So you, your, your bet relative to uh, other things in the pool. So the goal, of course, is to have a return that is greater than the pool uh, return. Okay, so um, what I really wanna do is to go through the mechanics of how this actually works and we're gonna do that next.